Okay, quick question. Why do Intel processors sound like superhero names? You've got Celeron, Pentium, i3, i5, i7, i9. It's like the Avengers, but for your laptop. The only problem? You don't know who's Iron Man and who's just the guy making coffee in the background. All right, let's go one by one through Intel's processors, from the baby of the family all the way up to the monster. First up, Celeron. Now imagine you're trying to get around town and all you have is a squeaky old bicycle. That's Celeron. It gets you from point A to point B, but don't expect it to win any races. It's cheap, slow, and really only meant for the basics, like checking emails, writing essays, or maybe watching YouTube as long as you don't open 20 tabs at once. These chips usually end up in budget laptops and school Chromebooks, perfect for students just typing papers or if your grandma wants to check Facebook. But if you try gaming on it, well, that's like trying to run a marathon in flip-flops. You'll regret it halfway through. Next is Pentium, which is kind of like an electric scooter. It's still not a car, but at least it's got a motor. Pentium gives you a little more speed and a smoother ride compared to Celeron. You can stream Netflix, join Zoom calls, browse the web, even multitask a bit without it crying in pain. It's a good option for people who want something cheap, but don't want to feel like their laptop is stuck in 2004. Of course, it's not built for heavy gaming or editing. Uh, asking Pentium to do that is like asking the kid who always got picked last in dodgeball to suddenly dunk like LeBron James. But for students, office workers, or casual users, it does the job just fine. Now let's move into the Intel Core family, starting with i3. Pentium was the scooter. i3 is your first car. Think Toyota Corolla. Nothing flashy, but reliable, affordable, and it won't fall apart on the highway. With two to four cores, depending on the generation, i3 gives you enough power for schoolwork, Netflix, multitasking, and yes, even some gaming. Minecraft, Fortnite, League of Legends, no problem. But try running Cyberpunk 2077 on this thing and you'll learn what lag truly feels like. So if you're a student or casual gamer, who just wants something simple but not frustratingly slow, i3 is a great entry point. Like buying fast food, it's not gourmet, but it fills you up without draining your wallet. All right, here's where things start getting good. The i5. The i5 is the Honda Civic of processors. Affordable, reliable, and surprisingly powerful when you need it. This is the sweet spot for most people. With four to 10 cores, depending on the generation, i5 strikes the perfect balance between price and performance. You can game, edit videos, stream, and multitask without problems. It's the processor for people who wanna do everything without spending a fortune. If you're building a gaming PC on a budget, this is usually the go-to. You get solid performance without going overboard. Honestly, an i5 is like pizza. Literally everyone loves it. Whether you're a gamer, a student, or just someone who wants their PC to actually keep up with them, Next up, i7. Now we're in sports car territory. The i7 is fast, flashy, and built for more than just the daily commute. With more cores, higher clock speeds, and hyper-threading, it's the processor that laughs at multitasking. Gaming, streaming, editing 4K videos, you can do all of it at the same time and still have power left over. It's a fantastic option for professionals, creators, or gamers who want to max out their settings. But if all you're doing is checking emails, then buying an i7 is basically like bringing a bazooka to a water balloon fight. You'll win, but come on man, was that really necessary? And finally, the big boss, the i9. If processors were cars, this is Formula One. Insanely fast, insanely powerful, and yeah, insanely expensive. The ii9 is Intel's top of the line beast, packing the most cores and the highest speeds. It's built for people doing heavy duty tasks like editing 8K video, running massive 3D projects, scientific simulations, or hardcore gaming at ultra settings. For professionals and enthusiasts, this thing is a dream, but for most people, way too much. Using an i9 just to scroll Instagram is like buying a Ferrari just to drive to the grocery store. Yeah, your milk gets home faster, but your wallet is crying. So there you go. From the squeaky little Celeron bike to the Formula One i9 monster, each processor has its place and the right one depends on what you actually need. Students and casual users stick with Celeron, Pentium, or maybe i3.
gamers, and creators, you'll be happy with i5 or i7. And if you're a professional who needs insane power or just someone who loves flexing, then i9 is your guy. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you found this video useful.